Meeting back to uh, order, if we can, thanks. Kathy and Janet and Mike. <laughs> and Kathy and Janet. <laughs> and Kathy and Kathy. And Kathy. Oh, that's all right. It's good, good, good to have you here. <laughs> Uh, right, um, I have to say now, get myself organised. Rightio, now just checking, we're back online, are we? Yep. Rightio, so we've gone through 7.2, so um, I'm now going to uh, move back to 6.C, which is members' business. Um, now, the reason I've moved that simply because I know we've got a little bit of time now before lunch, and I thought it was just a good opportunity for us to perhaps have a general discussion um, about issues that we may have um, as a table. I've got um, a little report back, a little report back that um, I will do as well, um, and a couple of uh, points that we um, can uh, look at that have been brought up in the past. Uh, so I'll kick off. Um, my update's been, obviously it's been a busy six weeks, uh, but as it always seems to be. A um, uh, key point for me has been attending the uh, local government conference. Um, uh, interestingly enough, a key takeaway for me in relation to this committee was um, Nationals' address um, versus um, Labor's address in regards to how that will impact on local government. Um, I found Nationals' address was very supportive uh, about building relationships and um, supporting local government. Uh, Mr. Hipkins, he's taken a bit of hits, a few hits recently, so apparently his report was a bit lacklustre and I didn't see it, but um, uh, Minister McNulty. Uh, was certainly very, um, very, uh, also very um, vocal about the support for local government and building the relationships going forward. My personal view is um, talks cheap, um, and um, but they have made some pretty big uh, promises coming into the next election. So I think it's going to be very much um, important for local government, New Zealand, and us as um, councils as well to hold them to those promises with regards to the relationship with central government, but the acknowledge that, um, acknowledgement that that relationship with between local government and central government needs to be one of better understandings of how each other works, uh, and um, it was very, very encouraging. Uh, I also attended the um, New Zealand Māori Council National AGM in Hui up in Auckland before that, that was also very, very interesting, and um, looking at um, ways that we can um, utilise that structure for getting results for what we want to see on the Kapiti Coast here as well, and the health stuff that came up today with regards to voting could be one of those. Uh, potentially just another vehicle there. Um, I've attended the KHAG meetings. I uh, was hoping to have the terms of reference here uh, for this meeting, um, but it is in the process of being tightened up a little bit. Uh, it needs to be passed back through the Kapiti Health Advisory Group, so the intent is to hopefully have it at the next hui. Um, but they are, look, they are doing ongoing um, investigational work uh, with regard to, and that was um, uh, reflected in a site visit to the uh, Kapiti Medical Centre earlier this week as part of the follow through on the Hass Hospital petition and one of our key objectives, which is um, more services in Kapiti as well. So uh, there is movement in that space. Um, also wanted to acknowledge publicly Donna Bridgman uh, and her work uh, with regards to homelessness. Um, and also wanted to acknowledge Rob McCann um, from um, the last Trinium who supported that work, uh, which allowed us to, um, to sub uh, have, a, have a verbal submission into the Social Services Committee earlier this week. Thank you, Mihara, for allowing me to be a part of that. Unfortunately, Lawrence, you're a bit crook, um, so um, it was great to be able to step up in that space. Um, and um, the simple fact that that awareness has come through and, allow and is now allowing us to have some very robust conversations in that space is much appreciated. Um, we, will, we will be responding to Donna to make her aware that her um, advocacy work, strong advocacy work in this space, has allowed for this situation to evolve, if you like. Uh, very much appreciative of her. Um, it doesn't take anything away from the fact that we've still got a lot of issues in this space, um, um, but I think we as a council are progressing this um, in, a, in, a, in what I would consider a fairly aggressive manner. Um, certainly in regards to Kainga Ori, Ministry of Housing and Urban Development, our relationships with them as they move into our district as well. Interestingly, a point that was taken up by uh, the committee was the fact that um, the national average for social housing is 4.5%, ours is only 1.5%. I would ask council officers if we could get confirmation of that because I think that's going to be a, um, uh, a point uh, for us to potentially get a crowbar in there with regards to some assistance or certainly with regards to speeding up of delivery, especially in the area of transitional housing in our district, but we'll certainly follow through on that. Um, what have I got here? 
Oh, that's right. Um, I did want to touch on the transport conversations that we had a couple of meetings ago. Mike, you brought this up with regards to some work in this space. I've just had a, a, a conversation um, with the Mayor. Um, perhaps I could just throw that over to you for the moment, um, Janet. We, we have a, 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 um, a link to the Regional Transport Committee via the Mayor, um, but we also we used to have a committee in that space as well. So can I just leave you to perhaps give a couple of comments on that? Would that be all right? On where we can perhaps go with regards to incorporating um, uh, the people that have put their hand up that are perhaps interested in that transport space. So we're looking at perhaps um, revitalising the, um, which is it, the transport committee as such? Yeah, council previously had a road safety advisory group. So the plan is to um, refresh and resurrect that group. So I'll be, um, I have been following up with staff and will continue to do so. It's just a, when time and resources allow, but um, certainly wanting to set that up as soon as possible. Excellent. Look, I'm happy to follow that with an email from the committee um, just to um, express our views around that. Yeah, that would be useful. Thank you. Fantastic. Uh, that's about it for me. A um, whole heap of other stuff going on, um, but I would quite prefer to open the floor up to general conversation um, for the next uh, little bit as such. And Mr Wilson, you might like to kick that off. Yeah, just with regard to the um, local government review and um, you guys who went to the conference, so I'm not quite sure if we're going to have a formal or informal feedback um, from that. I think there's a general interest among councillors and community board members about what went down. Um, so, for instance, uh, um, in, in the review, for instance, it's recommended that... Um, local government terms be four years. So I'm interested to see how the conference felt about that. Um, the remit that we had a direct involvement in around KiwiSaver, um, where did that land? And um, yeah, just just generally the stuff that, that went down. And I, I haven't seen anybody's responses to the local government review other than reading um, um, the minister's response that it's all under review and that like nothing's going to happen before the election. Pretty obvious reasons for that. Um, and so, yeah, so where we are in that space, we'll wait until then. But, yeah, d just the feedback from the conference itself and um, I'm not quite sure where you get how we access all the information to remits that were passed or failed or whatever. Look, um, I can give you a quick um, update now, and the mayor may want to um, um, add to that as such a good point. Uh, perhaps we do need to be feedback. It doesn't necessarily need to be discussed. It's maybe can something that can just come out as a one-pager or something like that. To be brutally honest, um, the local government reform is not really something that was heavily discussed, uh, in my opinion. Um, we've got second 17 recommendations here, so our we're pretty set with regards to what our requirement was. As I noted, we had some very strong indications from the National Party with regards to their supporting of that report, uh, of additional funding being coming in and also the building of understanding of local government as well. Uh, and we had the very similar sort of uh, scenario from Minister McNulty as well. So uh, I guess my point had been we, need, we needed to hear from central government whether there was a willingness or, um, or, whether, or whether we put the gauntlet down that this needs to be addressed or how is this going to be addressed uh, leading into the elections. I was pretty happy with what came back from the National Party, uh, especially uh, in regards to um, that gauntlet being taken up, uh, and there was, there's a lot of scope for us to hold, be holding the governments to account uh, post-election uh, with regards to what was talked to at local government um, as such, with regards to um, support, not just for the review, but there was other aspects of that as well. Uh, yeah, Horrible, did you want to add to that at all? Or, or maybe yourself, Sophie? Oh, Yeah, I agree with what Martin said. There was quite a bit of talk about the central government, local government relationship and um, also a campaign launched by the chief executive of LGNZ called Choose Localism. So a big focus on kind of how we tell our localism story and then how we kind of collate that as a sector and make a case for um, local government's value, I guess. So that was um, quite a focus. There were also some really interesting presentations around kind of how we incorporate future generations into our decision-making and what that looks like practically. 
um, which I took quite a bit from. The workshops were also really, really fascinating. I went to one on climate impacts, which was run by Aon Insurance, and there were some interesting um, key takeaways from, from within that session. Um, I think, yeah, the points that Martin's raised around, or briefly raised around, kind of funding models that came up several times, and there were some kind of new ideas put on the table, like Christopher Luxon raised the point around kind of local central deals, whereby um, you could have kind of a local government and central government partnership to deliver specific kind of suites of infrastructure, and that that's a package that is um, built together, and then that kind of, that idea was almost put to Kieran McAnulty on the second day when he presented, and he was like, yeah, something similar where the relationship can be improved, and um, that can be worked through would be good as well. There was quite, yeah, as I said, quite a bit of talk around localism and the importance of local government not just always being at the beck and call of central government, but making sure that we are really united and strong as a sector uh, and we're not fighting against each other for, for resources or, or kind of having these internal conflicts within the sector, but instead putting our best foot forward and that was... Um, really evident in the vibe of the conference, for sure. There was quite a kind of united and hopeful vibe. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Good. Yeah. Um, was Auckland there? No. There were two elected members from Auckland. There were some renegades. There were some renegades. Yeah. Probably, yeah probably <laughs> so cool. there was there were two elected members from Auckland who um, are both on the young elected members committee as well. So they, um, yeah, they kind of sorted their own way there. But there was there was a call from. Sam Broughton, who was elected as president, and Campbell Barry, elected as vice president, that the Auckland jokes were to be no longer. We don't want, like, Auckland jokes at the conference that was made quite clear and that they were going to focus on just rebuilding the relationship, really. And also, a, a point that Sam Broughton made quite clearly as um, the new president after he had just received that news was that um, we shouldn't be afraid of change. Uh, and yeah, so that was that was quite good as well. And in terms of the remits, the KiwiSaver one passed. Oh, they all passed. They all passed. Yep, yeah, they all passed. And look, just bit building on what uh, Sophie's talking, I'll come to Janet in just a moment. Um, one of the things I certainly took away from there, there's a lot of there's a lot of young leaders coming through, a lot of young leaders coming through, and I think that's that vibe in the room that I think maybe <laughs> Sophie was referring to um, was um, there's, there's there's definitely an energy there um, for change, but but not, not change for change's sake. And a big part of that, of course, is that building of the understandings between central and local government and ensuring that we are resourced properly with regards to our delivery as well. Mm. <laughs> Janet. Mm -hmm. there, was, there was actually really good music <laughs> one night, but I missed it. <laughs> it was a covers band with bagpipes, apparently, which I thought sounded interesting. So I just wanted to um, yeah, agree with everything that's been said. We are um, we traditionally have done an individual report back, but we might do one together this time. I'm not sure how we want to do that, but you will get a written um, feedback report, at least one, if not five. So I just wanted to follow up on the future of local government and what happened around that. So um, there was um, a joint position ta um, taken at the AGM, and I'll just read that out now. So that local government sees the future for local government work as essential for the incoming government to address. And I think that's around um, the fear that this will be put at the bottom of the pile um, in favour of the RMA and um, affordable waters reform. And the second, that local government should develop a consensus position on the future for local government report to take to the incoming government. And that LGNZ should facilitate engagement to develop that position between July and October so the position is agreed before the incoming government takes office. So we'll keep an eye on that and we'll make sure that um, we have a chance to feed back into that. I think um, there, there's already a group that's been formed in local government to have discussions around this. Um, it's been informally referred to as the amalgamation groups, but I don't agree with that. I think no. there's a lot more work to be done around a whole lot of issues that are, that are raised in that report. So, um, yeah, we just really look forward to to, to uh, being a part of that. I think the, the focus on um, localism that um, Sophie mentioned is going to be a really useful starting point in terms of developing a meaningful, um, st some kind of meaningful 
sector that delivers on that. The other um, the other presentation that was really powerful was um, Sophie Powell, Very who's the um, Commissioner for Wellbeing Future of Wales, and she talked about how every decision that we make needs to have a lens of all the well-beings, that we don't see a road as an infrastructure project, but we see it as a connector which increases well-being, for example. So um, that was that was a major takeaway for me. Um, I really appreciated Chris and Darren being there and 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 being able to discuss things and and really kind of crunch it out a bit between sessions. There was no break in the day where we didn't talk about local government. Yeah, none at all. <laughs> and um, yeah, it was it was just really valuable and also really happy to pick up a, a special mention in the super local awards for the Lorna Irene playground. Mm -hmm. Which was absolutely fantastic. We weren't expecting that. So no, it was a bit of a um, scramble. It was a bit of a scramble. <laughs> <laughs> but um, don't talk about that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so congratulations to the team for that. I think, even though it didn't quite fit into any of the categories that they set for this year, I think they recognised it was such a brilliant project that it needed an award, regardless. So really pleased about that. Council um, and 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 I don't know some other suitable message to the others. I mean, all three of them engaged with us, right? So be nice just to give them some feedback. Well done, whatever, loser, haha. Uh -huh. oh, you know, yeah. pick your message. Yeah, I have sent Sam a message from me, but I will I'll, I'll follow up saying that the rest of the council is and and, and we all congratulated we all congratulated them individually as well. And Campbell as well. I haven't sent a message mm. to him. And and a good suggestion to email the other candidates too because I think this more than in any other previous year um, or any previous process, the um, candidates really did put a huge effort in. And, um, yeah, and they were all outstanding candidates. Mm. So we couldn't really lose with that one. Yeah. Look, I'm, I'm also picking that um, local government's cutting central government a bit of slack with regards to that report. Um, and the information of until after the election. And um, so I'm, I'm very comforted to see that we are taking the approach of getting our ducks in order on how we want to go hard on this, if you like, after it, because my, my general impression is, is that local government's had a guts full of what's been thrown down the tube over the last three years, uh, had the approaches and just a general consideration or lack thereof that's been had in regards to local government. And to me, I think there's just a general lack of understanding to be honest, I think um, some some um, some learnings in that space uh, would be a good one for central government as well, eh, Nigel? Uh, <laughs> um, so no, it was very, it was very very uh, a very very um, constructive day. Um, I also popped along to the Tia Maruata um, conference, a part of it, the first first half day, which is the um, uh, iwi Maori, uh, sorry the Maori aspect um, of it as well. Again, just looking at how we build ties in that space. Very interesting to see the amount of uh, you know, increase in, in representation in that space as well. Um, as such, I won't do a plug. Um, <laughs> uh, Mike. Cora, thank you, Chair. Um, I, yeah, well, first, uh, I just want to mention about the transport thing that you mentioned. But, but first, uh, thanks for all those who did go down to Otatahu and represent this council. Uh, and it's good to know that next August it's coming to Pineke down to Wellington and there'll be more opportunity for uh, more elected members to go along and participate uh, in how that might look. So that's quite exciting uh, as as we go through possible discussions on reforms, etc. Regarding the transport thing that you brought up earlier, it hasn't gone unnoticed from my end in terms of the immediate concerns that the Tehoro community, of which I'm part of, uh, is missing out on. When we had the briefing here from MetLink on the 13th of June, uh, Thomas Nash, the, who holds the transport portfolio with regional council, said that they would go away and look at comms. Um, and he said, I agree that the worst thing here is a vacuum and no comms, so we'll try to address this. Now, that was the 13th of June. We've heard nothing. And the folks in our community who, who've been advocating for this and writing insistently have, have not had any uh, comms back or communication, neither have I in my follow-up emails to regional council and other. Forming some kind of a group so this doesn't just fall through another subcommittee hole I think is really uh, important. And I know um, our regional council, Penny Gaynor, said there is going to be a, a review on MetLink's regional services through Kapiti. 
but that's on one level uh, helpful and another level it's a stalling abdication that you know it'll just fit into that thing my biggest concern with the whole subject around the the bus services um, that are being ignored in these two rural communities of Peka Peka and Tihoro is that they're using the revocation of the old state highway between Peka Peka or actually Makahuri the old Mary Crest and Otaki as a reason not to do anything until that's finished and we know that's going to be at least four years away it, it, you know it, it's a long way before that will be completed it's still a road it's still being used every day by locals so to take that bus and i've said around this committee previously to go on the expressway is is not a reason that it should keep on cutting off community so capturing this as the chair has said in some kind of a, a transport forum and there's a number of people including um um, perhaps from, and Cathy as well, from um, Chris from Otaki's community board into a group is really helpful um, so that the subject just does not get forgotten. So thank you. Thank you for that, Mike. Um, again, I'll encapsulate a bit of that in the email. I've cool. Right, that's transport. Um, has anyone got any other topics that they would like to bring up or things that they would like to discuss? Yes, Cathy. Um, just in terms of local government, what does localism actually mean? Has it been defined down to a half a dozen words? Yeah, sorry, I did bring the forms, but I left them at home. Just let you know, we've got badges, and I've got badges for all of you, um, which I will bring in and pop in your uh, respective um, hole. Look, uh, I can't remember. Um, so obviously it was gripping. Um, <laughs> but we had a lot of information coming in at the same time as well. But I think Sophie is just going to save the day. Oh, no, I'm trying to find it. But there definitely is on the <laughs> website, and I can send it around. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And I'll... Look, I... Oh, you have found it? So localism is all about harnessing the power, knowledge, skills and views of local people to strengthen our communities. Localism builds on the unique qualities that make every town, city and region special. But localism is a choice. It won't happen on its own. It will take all of us working together to make a localist future a reality, a future by local government. So there was a real focus on not a future for local government, but a future by local government. So it's kind of that, that's it in a nutshell. A catchphrase of local is local, Kathy, you know, and um, like I said, coming down to the understandings, the central government have got a job to do, that's great, local government's got a job to do, um, you know, we're all adults and we're all uh, highly skilled uh, in our respective roles and we understand our respective roles, I think, so for me it's about um, having the respect and the investment in the appropriate places and allowing people just to get on with it, uh, with oversight, of course. Janet. First of all, if anybody wants to watch any of the presentations, they're all, they should be up online already, I'd say. Um, Susan Freeman-Green, the Chief Executive, is going to talk in a little more detail around that. And um, when we flick around our report, it looks like we're going to do a joint one. We'll, um, we'll include some useful, informative links in that document. And then we'll see if um, we need a follow-up briefing for any questions or anything. We might just organise a Zoom late one afternoon or something. Yeah, look, it, again, it's that getting, getting everyone together type scenarios who might be appropriate. Likewise, just in our informal conversations over the next month, I'm sure that people will be more than happy to impart their thoughts around that. But, um, yeah, like I said, a very nice energy coming through and, and great to see that younger set. Uh, uh, moku from up the far north, uh, which is um, Darren's uh, stomping grounds. Uh, he was given the award of the most... Um, uh, the um, uh, most promising uh, upcoming indigenous leader in the world. Is, is, that, is that right? The multiverse? The multiverse. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the world yeah, one, one young, yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> one world. One. One world. Yeah, one the <laughs> world. <laughs> <laughs> young, young. <laughs> which is uh, a great indictment on him with regards to um, uh, mm. the work he's been doing in the far north, uh, considering yeah. all the uh, issues they've had up there um, as well. Uh, I'd say he's a humble guy, but he's not. 
Uh, but he is in a nice, nice way. He's very approachable. He's a lovely guy, and um, and he brings a lot of mana to that uh, that role um, as well. But a lot of mana to youth coming through, um, um, and how they are approaching um, approaching things. Interesting enough, he's on a um, dry year um, uh, this year, which he's actually finding uh, um, very, very beneficial with regards to mm. just a, yeah. Mm. Now he's got a bit going on with his uncle, um, and uh, yeah. <laughs> And uh, but he's he's loving it. Uh, he's not having any issues with it at all, and he's finding the um, the um, unintended consequence as being uh, <coughs> he, as he's enjoying. He's broken the habit, enjoying the situation, and um, just getting a heck of a lot more done um, as well. <coughs> Nigel, I'm on my thirty seventh dry year actually. Uh, <coughs> Uh, just in terms of um, definitions of localism, localism uh, in terms of definitions that are handed down that then get incorporated into policy, I think we need to be a little bit careful about it. There's another definition of localism which I think has a slightly more Marxist bent to it if you look at the means of production and et cetera and consumption. Just a very short one. It says, localism describes a range of political philosophies which prioritise the local. Generally, localism supports local production and consumption of goods local control of government and promotion of local history, local culture and local identity. That that idea about local production and local consumption I think is going to um, is going to gain increasing ground as, as the world moves forward. That's something that in terms of policy formation, Chris will get across this, um, that the the idea of local production and local consumption is something that we really do need to think about. I've been a staunch advocate of buy local, um, and as a council, we are one of the biggest purchasers um, in the in in the area. Obviously, um, so I hope that's front of mind here. And just the last bit on our CE, I'll send a photo around. He did a reading for the kids in the library yesterday, which was just gold. It was absolutely fantastic. So I've got a couple of photos, so I'll share those, so yeah. Just building on that, Nigel, a little bit as well. So I hear what you're saying. This is where our um, destination strategy uh, and our tourism strategy is gonna be very, very important with regards to um, our, our identity of who are we um, as such. Big one for me has always been brand capity. Uh, I think we should be a premium brand, a bit like the Appalachian type systems for wine as such. Although it would be quite nice to know who owns the um, rights to the name Carpeti, as I think Fonterra has got a hook into that one. But my opinion is Fonterra should have never moved making Carpeti ice cream out of the district uh, for the simple reason. This is where it, that's, that's, its brand strength is local. The amount of people I say, oh, you know, Carpeti ice cream is from Carpeti, is it? Yeah, no, it's not. It's from there, but it's not where it's made now. Uh, Mm. <laughs> <laughs> isn't it? It's always two sides to a story, isn't it? <laughs> and look, one other thing I um, I will bring out of the conference is one of the groups that uh, was a sponsor there and also um, uh, was a great co-partner was Well Able, uh, and this was a group that are making cleaning uh, cleaning products and employing. Uh, people with intellectual um, handicaps um, as such. So I would, um, we're talking about local purchasing. I appreciate we can't um, ask our um, contractors uh, for a specific product, but if we like perhaps ask council officers if we've got a procurement process around just day-to-day -day cleaning uh, uh, stuff in, in, in our building, just detergents or anything like that, if we could change to that well-able label to support that co-papa, I think it's a fantastic co-papa to support. It only took me two and a half years to get a local coffee in here. I'm hoping it'll be a little bit quicker with regards to um, uh, with regards to a cleaning chemical um, as such. <laughs> um, uh, anyone have anyone else with anything else? Like? So you're incorporated into that loop as well. And Lawrence, you, are you still online? Have you anything you would like to bring up at all? Thanks, Mr. Chair. But I'm happy with conversations as they've gone. Thank you. Fantastic. Anyone like any updates on anything that we might know anything about? No, not at all. No, no, I'm just, okay, well, in that case, I'm prepared to call the meeting to a close. Oh, hang on. Oh, okay, sorry, got to do, um, got to be a little bit keen. Getting a little bit keen? A little bit keen? Um, it's not quite between me and lunch yet, so it's not too much of a, dram uh, a drama. But, um, okay, first thing is, um, 
We're on to item uh, eight now, which is confirmation of minutes. Uh, does anyone have anything they want to bring up on the minutes at all? Yeah. Uh, Nigel. Sorry, I did. Um, the, uh, in during public speaking, it, well, it was kind of public speaking and kind of a presentation. We had um, Hunter Donaldson from the um, Citizens Advice Bureau, and there was, um, seemed to be a general consensus in the room that the work that they were doing was fantastic and, and needs to be funded. Uh, what wasn't clear, uh, well, it was talked of at the time that there would be a proposal would go for funding into the LTP. Um, I just wasn't quite sure what the mechanism for that was. So d will this committee make some formal recommendation about that or is... Um, mm. Should I show Janice under the bus on this one? You know, we do. Look, um, yeah. my initial thought, um, Nigel, would you be you championing that cause, mm -hmm. which I'm happy to work with you with, uh, and just to bring it into the long-term plan conversation early on the process so it can be considered. I'm yeah. uh, happy to endorse it. Um, uh, rather than it come from the committee per se, um, I dare say then you, that way you can follow that conversation right through the process, um, okay. if you like. And I dare say if um, you are wanting to champion that, which I think is a very admirable uh, cause, then having that person follow that through uh, would be um, would more than likely be more advantageous. That's just my thought on that, but happy right. to uh, be guided. Certainly, yeah. Janice. So um, I was supposed to meet with Hunter last week, um, but it was delayed because I was unwell for a couple of days, unfortunately, but, um, and it is my intention to do that. I, I guess there are a couple of other points that I think it might be useful um, to raise. Uh, we know that there is a concern for some community or social sector organisations um, that there is no local funding available to help with day-to-day -day costs that keep organisations going. Um, we know that that's a gap, uh, um, uh, and it is a gap that um, exists in part because of decisions made a number of years ago now to move to a social investment approach for funding. Um, uh, I imagine that the advocacy um, that you have had from the Citizens Advice Bureau is just the beginning of advocacy that you will that you will be on the receiving end of from organisations within the community as we move towards the long-term plan process. Um, I have um, we've started a conversation within the Connected Communities team around how we can um, gather, I guess, some information on the vulnerability of organisations within that sector to be able to bring to you as part of the long-term plan, plan process. Um, it, it is just an early conversation at this stage, but I um, expect that we would look to work with um, uh, um, our social investment contract holders uh, that are responsible for um, a piece of work around building you know, a more collaborative social sector. So we'd look to work within the networks that they have established as part, of, as part of that piece of work to understand this picture and be able to bring an office perspective on that back to you as part of the LTP process. Um, uh, so you can expect to see more from us on that in the next few months. And look, Nigel, um, I have yet to have a chat with the Mayor with regards to what we are going to discuss with the um, social services committee next week, um, but maybe that's something we can incorporate a little bit into that discussion as well mm. with regards to it, so that could be, a, could be a pathway that's opened up to us as well, which we'll try to capitalise on. Okay, so if we can just, um, if I can have a mover for the minutes. Yep, the seconder, uh, Mayor Holborough. Uh, all those in favour? Aye. Fantastic, that's passed. Excellent. Um, just checking, we've just got the closing karakia. Yep, okay. Um, so, just finishing off the closing karakia. Uh, tutawa mai iraro, uh, tutawa mai iroto, tutara mai i wahu. Uh, kia tua a Māori, a tu ti Māori ora kiti katoa, hua mai, hua mai. Yay, hua yay. Okay. Sorry, <laughs> just doesn't read how it sounds. But <laughs> it throws me off. So try not to look at it. <laughs> uh, I call this meeting to a close. Um, thank you very much for your attendance. Um, lunch will be served in approximately half an hour.
And I do note the Audit and Risk Committee is commencing at 1.30 for anyone that wants to um, come over. Apparently, it's quite a full agenda um, as such.